Okay, we're gonna keep right on in this section. Um, sort of ending a section halfway through is not something I like to do if I can help it, but last week was such an unusual week that I really couldn't help it. Um, last week we went from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So now we are going to go in the opposite direction. Let's talk about converting. from rectangular to a polar coordinates. And again, we won't work with equations, at least at the moment. We'll just say that we have a point x comma y that we want to convert to polar coordinates. And um, this is relatively, it, it's always a mistake to call something straightforward, but we're not going to like be learning any exciting new techniques here. We're going to use material that we already know. I mean, our situation is going to be that we have some point in rectangular coordinates. And if we want to express it in terms of polar coordinates, we need to find this distance. First of all, this R. We can do that without using any trigonometry. We'll talk about how in a moment. And then we need to find this angle theta. And exactly how easy or how difficult finding theta is may vary from problem to problem, but we're fundamentally going to be using right triangle trigonometry here. We are going to be using the fact that if we have a point x comma y and we have this angle theta that we're interested in, and this is the origin, zero comma zero, then x is going to be that side of a triangle and y is going to be that side of a triangle, and the hypotenuse is going to be the radius, r, and we're going to use our known relationships, that the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, that the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is not a um, trigonometric identity. I said we could you we could find the radius r without using trigonometry. This is the good old Pythagorean theorem. And then since we have the sine and the cosine, let's throw in that the tangent of theta is y divided by x. And we're going to use these um, 
do as these formed laws, do as these known facts to find Theta. Let's dive in to an example. We'll do two examples. We'll start with a relatively straightforward one. Well, there's that word again, but I don't know what else to say. The reason I call this relatively straightforward is that it's in the first quadrant. Points in the first quadrant are easiest to deal with. We need to know theta and we need to know R. And because finding R doesn't require any trigonometry, let's do it first. We use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see, nine plus nine is 18. R is the square root of 18. And now um, let's find theta. We, uh, we have options here. We need a formula that has theta in it. Um, that because we found R first, we know X and R and Y, and we could use any of these formulas. Let's follow the textbook and use this formula. And the reason the textbook uses the tangent formula is that the textbook did things in a different order than I did. The textbook found theta before it found R. And since the textbook author doesn't know what R is, but does know the adjacent side and does know the opposite side, the textbook author is forced to use the tangent because the tangent relates the sides that the textbook author knows. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent is one. Theta is the arc tangent of one. Which is pi over four. We take the arc tangent of both sides. And then when you're doing these quests, these problems, you have to ask yourself if the in if the answer, the inverse trig function is giving you makes sense. Let's see. Theta is in the first quadrant. So theta needs to be between zero and pi over two. And pi over four is that. Pi over four is between zero and pi over two. So this makes sense. And 
fisting the radius first. The point in polar coordinates is the square root of 18, comma, pi divided by 4. And this is not the only way to write this. Um, you have, you've seen, we have seen last week that a point in polar coordinates can be written in an infinite number of ways. But this is probably about as nice a way as we're going to get. The radius is positive, the angle is positive, and the angle is fairly small. So we've converted a point from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. Now let's see a slightly more complicated example. Let's look at the point negative three comma four. So we're in the second quadrant, maybe around here. And we need to find this theta. And I'm going to go ahead this time and follow the order of the textbook. Um, so I'm going to start and I'm going to find theta. And I'm going to say, okay, we know that the tangent of theta is y over x. So the tangent of theta is four over negative three. Then we'll once again use an inverse trig function. We'll once again use the arc tangent. And now we get negative 0 0.927. And something has gone wrong, or at least something has seemingly gone wrong. And what's happened is a feature of the arc tangent that the arc tangent can only give you angles in the first and the fourth quadrant. What the arc tangent has done is given us this angle. Um, which I had better not call theta. That's horribly confusing because these two angles are different. Uh, fortunately, this isn't the end of the world. Um, although it does require some high school geometry, which I know probably a lot of us don't cling to, but our high school geometry says that if we've got this angle here and this angle here, those angles are the same. Um, 
well, in high school, the angles you were looking at were all positive, probably. Typo, fix that. So this angle here is negative 0.927. This angle here is positive 0.927. And now we use the fact that there are pi radians in a straight line. And we solve for theta. Let me do the subtraction on a calculator. Two point two one four. So there's our theta, and we're halfway done, but um really more than halfway done because we've done the part of this problem that at least I personally think of as the tricky part of the problem. Now to find R, we use this statement that R squared is X squared plus Y squared. A uh, sort of famous triangle the ancient Babylonian knew that you could make a very nice right triangle with sides three, four, and five. And it's super important, radius, comma, angle. Make sure you do not get those confused. So that's taking a point in rectangular coordinates and finding a way of writing it in polar coordinates. Again, there are an infinite number of ways to write any point in polar coordinates. So I went for a point with a positive radius and a positive angle. I will just jot down kind of an alternative. So the reason this works is because of the way a negative radius works. A negative and a negative, well, mainly a negative radius. The angle takes you here, a positive radius would cause you to go in that direction, but a negative radius causes you to go in the other direction. Um, conventionally speaking, we prefer to have a positive radius and a positive angle.